Wow, guys, J.D. Vance and Kristen Walker went over numerous sensitive topics. Check this out. Thank you so much for being here. I want to talk to you about the immunity ruling and the implications. This is what Donald Trump said last year about wanting to target his political opponents. Take a listen. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family. You were to be his vice president. Would you support him appointing a special prosecutor to go after his political enemies, the Bidens? Well, first of all, Kristen, I find it interesting how much the media and the Democrats have lost their mind over this particular quote. Donald Trump is talking about appointing a special prosecutor to investigate uh, Joe Biden for wrongdoing. Joe Biden has done exactly that for the last few years and has done far more in addition to that to engage in a campaign of lawfare against his political opposition. I think what Donald Trump is simply saying is we ought to investigate the prior administration. There are obviously many instances of wrongdoing. Uh, the House Oversight Committee has identified an, a number of corrupt business transactions that may or may not be criminal. Of course, you have to investigate to find out. So I think Donald Trump saying, look, let's do the basic work of investigating wrongdoing is a totally reasonable thing for him to do. And frankly, the Biden administration has done far worse. So if you think that what Donald Trump is proposing is a threat to democracy, isn't what Biden has already done a massive threat to our Se system of law and Se government? Senator, just to be very clear, though, Joe Biden didn't appoint a special prosecutor. The attorney general did that. Trump was indicted by grand juries. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers in New York. But can we just go back to the core question here? Would you support him taking such an action? It sounds like you're saying, yes, you would. And I don't think he would be wrong for support that because at the end of the day, that's his job is to be the vice president and follow Trump to wherever he takes him, but guide him to do the right thing. But I don't think there's going to be a time where Trump isn't president just because he he basically beat all of these cases so far and he's still just standing strong and beating everyone in the media and he's still answering questions and we know who's not answering questions that's a no-brainer let's keep going guys i would absolutely support investigating prior wrongdoing by our government absolutely that's what you have to have in a system of law and order Kristen. but i have to reject the premise here uh, Joe Biden appointed the attorney general, Merrick Garland, who, of course, answers to Joe Biden, can be fired by Joe Biden. So the idea that the Biden administration has nothing to do with the appointment of the special prosecutor, I think, completely betrays an understanding, a misunderstanding of how but, our system of government actually but, works. But and of but, course, and of course, Kristen, we, ha we, ha we, we have to say, we have to make this point, Kristen, uh, that the prosecution of Donald Trump in New York, which I think now is fundamentally been thrown in doubt by this immunity case, it was one of the main guys was a Department of Justice official in the Biden administration who jumped ship to join a local prosecutor's office to go after Donald Trump. And yet Trump. the DOJ that told doesn't Con make you question Senator, the legitimacy of the prosecution, that's a problem. Well, Senator, that happens all the time. People are appointed from Washington, but the DOJ told Congress, testified this week Kristen, that it reviewed it happens, all... It, hold on, Senator, Are let you me really finish. saying, Kristen, Senator, Senator, it let happens, me finish my it happens sentence, all the time... Then I'll let you finish. Hold on. The number th let, let me just please. finish this. The go DOJ ahead. told Sorry. Congress this week it reviewed all communications since Biden took office and found no contact between federal prosecutors and those involved with that case in New York. Because the same exact people are paying, paying to hush all that up, paying to make sure the truth doesn't get out there because they really don't want to know how dark they are and how, how far they're willing to go to make sure this guy doesn't get in office. But the truth has been so blatant that they're trying to undo a lot of the stuff that they did. And they're still, they're still throwing shots at them. But they're trying to undo some of the stuff they did because the truth is starting to come out. People are starting to wake up. You guys are starting to wake up. I'm starting to wake up even more. But we're starting to see the truth of what it is. Let's keep going, guys. Can you stick to the substance of the question, though? Let me just ask because you are – I just want to stick with this line of theory that you are laying out, which is you are saying it's not okay for Joe Biden to weaponize the Justice Department. If it's not okay for Joe Biden to weaponize the Justice Department, as you say, which there's no evidence of that, why is it okay for Donald Trump to do that? 
Well, Kristen, first of all, you said that it happens all the time, that the number three person in the Department of Justice jumps ship to join a local prosecutor's office to go after the president's political opponent. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of American democracy, and I don't think that we should legitimize it. Now, if Donald Trump's attorney general had this, his number two or his number three jump ship to a local prosecutor's office in Ohio or Wisconsin, and that person then went after Donald but Trump's political opposition, that's a different conversation. Sen Senator all he's suggesting is that we should investigate yeah. credible arguments of wrongdoing. That's all that Donald Trump... And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. You're just trying to make sure you're going after the right people. And the right people that are going after you are doing it the right way, if that makes sense. You don't want someone cricket going after you, going after you cricket because they're going to play crookedly. Just go by the book and play by the book. Play by the book. That's all Trump is trying to do. He's not going out there saying, "Oh, we're going to go after them just because he he was my opponent and he threw to no." He's he's doing the right thing. Let's keep going. Trump is saying that is not a threat to democracy. So, that's merely reinforcing our system of law and government. Bottom line: You are okay with Donald Trump appointing a special prosecutor to go after his political enemies which would include Joe Biden. I, you're just to button that up. It sounds like you're saying yes. Let me move on, though, to my next question. I want to talk to you about the Heritage Foundation. It's a conservative think tank in Washington. It shapes the agenda they would like to see in a Trump second term. The president said this after the Supreme Court's ruling this week. Take a look. We're in the process of taking this country back. No one in the audience should be despairing. No one should be discouraged. We ought to be really encouraged by what happened yesterday. We are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Do you support those calls for a revolution and would political violence ever be justified? Well, of course, political violence is never justified, Kristen. You'll have to ask the president of the Heritage Foundation to defend his remarks if you'd like to do that. I will say, look, the Heritage Foundation does a lot of good work. It does a lot of things that I disagree with, a lot of things that I agree with. Uh, but, but the Heritage Foundation is a nonprofit organization that works on public policy. And I think it's an important part of how D.C. functions and operates. Uh, we'll continue to have important conversations in the Republican Party with a whole host of think tanks from the right and from the left as we craft public policy. Uh, that's the way the city works. And uh, again, I'm not going to be the person who serves as the spokesperson for the Heritage Foundation. I don't have any affiliation. Sounds like you're distancing yourself from those comments, that talk of political violence. Look, Kristen, I certainly don't think political violence is justified. That's certainly actually not what I think that Kevin Roberts Let was me... saying to begin with. But again, have him have him on, yeah. on, on your program to defend what he said. Me... Uh, and I think that's the best thing to do. Let me ask you specifically about Project 2025 for our viewers so that they know. It's basically a policy blueprint for a second Trump presidency. It's supported by the Heritage Foundation and other conservative groups. The Biden campaign has said Project 25, quote, should scare every single American. It would give Trump limitless power over our daily lives. Among the things they are calling for is reversing approval of the abortion pill, Mifepristone, but Donald Trump says he supports access to that pill, actually. Do you support access to abortion medication as Donald Trump does? Well, Kristen, for, you asked about Project 2025, and I want to be clear here. Uh, that t Trump explicitly has said his own transition team runs the Trump transition and will run the Trump administration. Again, you have a whole host of organizations, some of which have good ideas, some of which have bad ideas, and some of which have both. And I'm sure the Trump administration will talk to a lot of people as it's crafting an agenda to bring back American manufacturing jobs, to lower inflation, and to bring peace and prosperity back to the world. That's the whole reason why me and so many others are trying to reelect Donald Trump is because the agenda actually worked. It was his agenda. Agenda, and I think it'll work again for the American people. On the question of the abortion pill, what so many of us have said is that, look, um, we, we certainly don't. Uh, the Supreme Court made a decision saying. So well, I, I know I keep pausing it, but what I'm going to say is I don't disagree with a lot of stuff on that part of 2025. I don't disagree with a lot of it. Some of that stuff actually may need to be implemented, but you can't sit there and just because you think it's harsh, say he's trying to rule the world. No. <laughs> It's not, it's not what's going on, man. Let me know what you guys think about that Project 2025. We already know he doesn't have anything to do with it, but still, let's see what you guys have to say. 
uh, that the American people should have access to that medication. Donald Trump has supported that opinion. I support that opinion. I think it's important to say that we, we actually have to have an important conversation in this country about what our abortion policy should be. Uh, Donald Trump is the pragmatic leader here. He's saying most abortion policy is gonna be decided by the states. Uh, we want to make it easier and more affordable for young women and parents to have families to begin with. We want to lower housing costs, yeah. eliminate the surprise medical bills that so many families see after yeah. they have a baby. So, That's the Trump and Republican approach well, to this issue. Uh, Meanwhile, Joe Biden wants taxpayer-funded taxpayer abortion up to the moment of birth. It, it, it's so Senator, crazy to me Senator, how that, the hold, Democrats hold on, frame to, this as Republicans. Let, just, just let me finish, Kristen. D D Democrat, they frame Democrats as being reasonable and pragmatic when in reality, Senator, Republicans are the one trying to find some Senator, common ground as here. you know, abortions, very few abortions take place later in pregnancy and almost always because there is a medical emergency. I know Trump is trying to distance himself from Project 2025, but we have to point out that a number of people who are involved with... She was getting eight alive, so she had to cut them off. <laughs> ...are former Trump officials, Ben Carson, Peter Navarro, Ross Vaught, and others. But just to be clear, you support Mifepristone being accessible. So, so that's what you get out of that. that. That's what you get out of that. You want to ask that one question. After he said all that, that's what you get out of that. And this is me in my 60s. How? Yes, Kristen, I do. But again, on the Project 2025 issue, what the media and the Democrats are trying to do is attach its most unpopular elements to the Trump administration. It's a 900 page document. I guarantee yep. there are things that Trump likes and dislikes about that 900 page document. But he is the person who will determine the agenda of the next administration. All he said very explicitly is. I am in charge yeah. of the next administration because I'm the person running for president. It's just important to make that clarification. Let me, let me ask you something uh, that caught our eye. This is something you wrote in the New York Times op-ed in 2017 about former President Barack Obama. You criticized his policies, but you also said, quote, it is one of the great failures of recent political history that the Republican Party was too often unable to disconnect legitimate political disagreements from the fact that the president himself is an admirable man. For at a pivotal time in my life, Barack Obama gave me hope that a boy who grew up like me could still achieve the most important of my dreams. For that, you write, I will miss him. And the example he set, you wrote that just days before Donald Trump was inaugurated. Do you still consider Barack Obama to be an admirable man who you miss? Hope not. Well, you know, I grew up in a broken family, uh, Kristen, and I just wanted to be a good husband and dad. And certainly Barack Obama, despite my many political disagreements with him, he's clearly a good husband and a father. By the way, I'd say the same thing about Donald Trump, whose children love him. And I think this is one of the things that... This, this, is, this is how you answer questions. She's trying to start something, she's trying to spark something, but he shot it right down. Despite his political views, he's, a, he's just a great father. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But he's just not great for America media often misses about Trump is how genuinely devoted he is to his family, to his grandchildren, and how part of his pro-life messaging, his fundamental pro-life view, is that we ought to make it easier for more American families to have those thriving children and, and thriving families. So uh, certainly I think we've been blessed with a lot of good examples across our country. And yeah, absolutely. Was Barack Obama a good president? No. Uh, was he a good husband and father? Yes. Wow, guys. So we're going to end it off right there. I really, really want to know what you guys think about this. This was just a cat, cat and mouse game. This whole time, this was just a cat and mouse game. She was trying to chase him. She was trying to chase him, but she just couldn't get him. He, he had answers for every question. He made Trump look great. He made Trump look very smart for picking him as VP. He knows how to conduct himself. He knows how to answer questions. He knows when someone's out to get him. That's what I like the most. He knows when someone's out to get him, so he gets away every time. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know in 3 Act 2. We're out.